You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. Sorry for the uh, lateness of the broadcast, folks, but uh, apparently the whole world changed their time, and here in Arizona, we don't do that. We never change our time. We have plenty of sunshine year-round. <laughs> in fact, we've got enough sunshine that we could give the rest of the world half of it, and we wouldn't miss it a bit. And so we don't have to go on daylight savings time or any of that nonsense at all. Um, in the summertime, sometimes the sun doesn't set until like 9 o'clock at night. So we don't need that silly stuff. I mean, to me, it's just absolutely silly. It screws with everybody's biological clock anyway. So why do they do it? I mean, it's supposed to get dark, you know, at, at, at night. And it's supposed to be, you know, the sun's supposed to come up in the morning and... Uh, but somebody, you know, can't get up that early to enjoy the sun, so they have to, they have to make the sunset later. <laughs> so uh, I know that there's nobody in Arizona listening to this broadcast, and they won't uh, turn on their radios to listen to it uh, until the end of this hour, because that's when they expect to hear it. And just like me, they had no idea uh, that the time had changed. And since we go on the air on shortwave, according to Eastern Time, then if they change their clocks, then we have to go on the air when they change their clocks, no matter what time it is here in Arizona. And uh, since we don't go on daylight savings time in Arizona, there is no announcement in Arizona. There is no, you know, nobody publishes it in the newspaper and people don't talk about it because it doesn't exist in Arizona. <laughs> so I got caught off guard today. And because of that, because of that, I got to tell you, folks, I'm really tired. I'm exhausted, to tell you the truth. I've been working my butt off really hard. We have met the goal for the television project. And now I'm trying to get that uh, producing. If you still want to contribute, you may. Nobody's going to stop you. Nobody's going to complain if you do. But we have met our goal. And so that's now a reality. It's just getting it going. And that's what I'm working on, amongst other things, this sale that we're having. Uh, and we've extended it to the end of April, by the way. It's been extended until the end of April for those of you who needed an extra paycheck or whatever it was that you were complaining about. We extended it to the end of April to accommodate you. Um, there's tons of orders. It is a real chore getting them filled, plus trying to make the television project work, plus do all the other stuff that we have to do and do an hour or two hour broadcast each night, Monday through Thursday, and everything else. And uh, so I'm tired. I'm just really, really tired. I was going to do a rerun tonight, and then uh, Alan called me from WBCQ, and he says, Where are you? How come you're not on the air? What's going on? I said, what, what are you talking about? You're supposed to be on the air. It's 8 o'clock. I said, it can't be 8 o'clock. I don't go on the air until 6 o'clock, Arizona time, and it's only 5. You know, but it, it's 8 o'clock here. You've got to be on the air. <laughs> and so I'm on the air. I'm exhausted. I don't have a broadcast prepared. I don't know what to say. And uh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I have been watching all the news about Kosovo and the war. And to those of you who've been to our website, you know I've been very busy on the website. 
providing you with information. That takes hours each day. By the way, in case you don't uh, realize it, keeping that website up, keeping it operating, keeping the links valid, putting information on there, writing the stories, all of those things takes hours every single day. In addition to everything else that I'm doing, I'm tired. I'm really tired. I am physically, mentally, and emotionally exhausted. In fact, if you want to know the truth, I'm a wreck. <laughs> and uh, I don't know when I'm going to get any rest. And uh, it doesn't really make any difference because I still have to do all of this stuff. And uh, so I guess tonight we're going to talk about Kosovo on the hour of the time. And uh, we'll open the phones, you know, right after this short pause. So don't go away, folks. I'll be right back. Like always, we have the on top of it music, and I hope you could uh, hear the the lyrics there. Uh, good evening. You're on the air. Hello, Bill. This is Annette from Barnesboro. Hi, Annette. Um, I I heard the Jeff Davis program. The reception was very poor in my area, but what I got from it was that 19 body bags were coming back through Macedonia, and uh, I. I thought I heard him say they were Americans, and I wondered if you had heard about that. Uh, not through Macedonia, no. I have heard about uh, published reports in uh, Greece, 
and uh, Turkey that say that uh, American dead have come through Greece uh, to be shipped back to the United States and that the government is not talking about it. These were published reports in uh, major uh, newspapers in Greece. All I can say is we don't deal in, in rumor. All we can say is what we know. And all we know is nothing. We know what was published in the newspapers in Greece. Uh, we know what was published in the newspapers in Turkey. Uh, we don't actually know if it's fact. The, Just the because something's... The positive of what he said was that there were 19... It doesn't matter. Oh, I see. You see, that just because he said it doesn't make it true. Just so because I it was... I was asking if you had a confirmation anywhere. No. And just said, no. tell me what, uh, what you know. Yeah. All right, that's, that's all I wanted to say. Okay. Good Thanks night. for calling. 520-333-4578. Just because something's printed in the newspaper, folks, does not mean that it's true. And uh, But there are published reports in the newspapers in Greece and Turkey uh, that quite a few dead Americans were brought through those countries uh, in order to... Uh... Good evening, you're on the air. Hey, Bill, yeah, how you doing? This is Nick in Charlotte. Hi, Nick. I uh, just wanted to comment on what the last lady just said. I've seen those same reports over the satellite from Greek TV, Greek News, and I, I didn't know anything about it. That was the first I heard about it, and I couldn't verify it, so I didn't know what to think, and I was going to ask you the same question, but I guess you beat me to the punch. No, nope, that's all I can tell you, is that they were published uh, in the Greek uh, news media and in the Turkish news media print. I didn't know that it was uh, on the uh, satellite news, but I know that it's in the print news in those two countries. Right. And uh, 19 is a low figure from what I've seen. Right. Well, let me ask you a question. How do you think they would try to, how, how can they cover up 19 deaths of servicemen like that? Uh, don't ask me because I don't know. I don't see how it could, could be done. I don't either. Uh, unless they have uh, realized their ultimate goal of complete and total control of all the press in this country. Right. And if that's Thanks true. Lot. Keep up the good work. Okay. Thank you. And if that's true, folks, if they have, if they've really done that, then um, <laughs> then it's all over. Because you know, winning the war is just uh, a process of convincing the majority of the people that you're right. And if you have the only method of of speaking to those people, then that that's pretty easy thing to do. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight. Uh, we'll be uh, taking phone calls for the whole broadcast tonight. This. Uh, uh, this uh, daylight savings time thing took me completely by surprise. For those of you who have not been to our website lately, go there now. Harvest-trust.org. You will find some absolutely startling information there. Good evening. You're on the air. Good evening. I just wanted you to let you know that you have at least one Arizona listener. Well, hi, Glenn. How are you? I'm just fine, Bill. How, how did you tune in so early? Did you know that just they... listening to your music on the FM. Oh, I see. You were listening to music, and then all of a sudden, there I was. Huh? There you are, explaining that you're late uh, for a very important date. Yeah, an hour early here. <laughs> Times change, on you? Yeah. I, that... I keep thinking almost all day long about uh, how wonderful it is that we can go and fight and get killed in Kosovo, wherever the heck that is, and uh, go out there and kill people that never did us any harm. It's just wonder of all wonders. Yay, Bill. <laughs> well, it, it, I hope it's not yay, Bill, I, I, unless you're talking about Bill Clinton. Now, that's who I meant. Yeah, okay. Being sarcastic and talking to Bill Clinton. <laughs> Yeah, yay, Bill, king of the world. Um, he thinks he wants to be king of the world. Well, according to what he's done, I guess he is, because NATO is a United Nations force. It was formed under the United Nations Charter, under the auspices of the United Nations, and must conform to all the rules of the United Nations. You know, I didn't know that until you told it to us on the air some time back, and I see in today's Arizona Republic somebody crying down both legs that uh, uh, here is NATO taking off without getting proper permission from the United Nations. Not only that, but Bill Clinton ordered all of it. Bill Clinton is the one who approves and names the targets. Bill Clinton 
is the king of the world. He has completely cut the United Nations out of the deal, and he, as the president of one country, ordered the NATO strikes on Yugoslavia, Serbia, and Kosovo. Now that, uh, and plus it's against the Constitution for the United States of America. It's the first time the United States, to my knowledge, has ever made an unprovoked attack upon any foreign nation whatsoever, especially one that had been so friendly and so helpful to us in the past. And uh, he has done it as a blatant act of war without the declaration of war that Congress only can make according to the supreme law of the land, which up until recently used to be the Constitution for the United States of America. Apparently that document is no longer in force. Well, I hate the people enforcing that document, uh, and lately I haven't seen a whole lot of enforcement coming from the people. Well, uh, it's pretty hard for the people to do when their leadership tells them that, uh, that what we're doing is right. I was watching the Mormon conference this weekend when, uh, when uh, lo and behold, the, the Lord High uh, Mormon um, told his flock that uh, they better get behind this and don't ask questions and all that kind of stuff, and, and uh, this is what we've got to do. And uh, so, you know, how are people supposed to make up their own mind when they're relying upon leaders like this to tell them the truth, and the leader has been brainwashed. I am very, very sorry to hear that. I am a Mormon, you know, Bill. Yeah, I know. I, I understand that. And I have a great respect for you and, and, uh, and all of the Mormons whom I know. And uh, I know that the Mormon Church has done the tremendous good for an awful lot of people. Um, but, you know, they just fell right in line. I don't understand it. And it's not just the Mormon church. The only reason I said that is because it's an example that I can bring up that everybody living in this valley understands. The, the leadership of the Baptist church has done the same thing. I have seen the, the, the Reverend Schuler of the Crystal Cathedral do the same thing. I have, the, 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 of course, the uh, Pope, the leader of the Catholic church, has not. He has come out against this. and Why and uh, on the Pope? Yes. I've always said he's a groovy dude. Well, uh, sometimes he is and sometimes he isn't, but in this case he is. Well, you know, we had a poster someplace in the army and it said, Join the army. Go to faraway places with strange sounding names and meet intelligent, intense people and kill them. <laughs> yeah. and, and this is apparently what we're doing. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, when you told me this was the first time we'd done the unprovoked assault thing, I put it right in the middle on the top of the front page about unprovoked assault. I saw that, and, and I think that was a great thing for you to do. It'll make people, uh, you know, think twice about this. I, I hope somebody will do some thinking besides say, Oh, yes, my country needs my support. We're going to blast the hell out of... Who is it we're blasting today? <laughs> yeah, that's and that's what the Germans did, and in the Nuremberg Berg trials, uh, that was cast down as as a terrible thing to do. Even the lowliest soldier must make sure that what he's doing is right, and proper, and lawful. And if he's if 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 it's not, he can be tried for war crimes. That's right. Now you notice that Michael knew drew his line in the sand and would not put on the United Nations uniform. And, and that's exactly what he should not have done, and uh, and he didn't do it. And uh, he no was... No good deed ever goes unpunished. Yeah, that's true. He was court-martialed, and uh, he's out now. And all, all, the little, uh, all the little puppy dogs, all the little puppets, they licked their master's hand and put on the blue beret and uh, went off after having sworn allegiance to the Constitution for the United States of America, to protect and defend the Constitution for the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic, went off to place their allegiance under a foreign commander to serve under a foreign force. And, uh, foreign purposes. Yeah, and, and there's nothing in their enlistment contract or in their oath that allows for such a thing to happen. Well, they're being sold out as mercenaries, just like the King George III bought some Hessians. Yeah, we're all being sold out. We're being we're we're all being sold out. Well, that's a true fact. Yeah, I, I notice another thing. You keep saying the Constitution for the United States, 
and I had always heard of the Constitution of the United States. Well, if you read the document, you'll see right at the top it says Constitution for the United States of America. Oh. I always go to the source, and to me, that's the that's the lawful and correct uh, terminology. Uh, just like everybody across the country always says inalienable rights. It's unalienable rights. Yeah, I go to the Declaration of Independence where that word, word was first used in the law and it says unalienable rights. Okay? There it is. Yeah. Let's say it. It's right in the preamble. It says, we ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States. I never had noticed that. Most people never do. <laughs> they just listen to what somebody else says and they repeat it. And, uh, that, you know, part of this broadcast, part of the reason for this broadcast is get people to stop repeating what other people say and, and go look for themselves and find out what the truth is. Because words do make a difference, and you can destroy yourself by the wrong terminology. For instance, unalienable means cannot be leaned against, cannot be taken away. Inalienable means that it can. How about that? Got me. <laughs> Got me for sure. And the the authority is the uh, meanings of the words and the dictionaries that define those words at the time the words were written, not today. Well, I uh, thought another uh, another thing there uh, about words, and that's on the uh, income tax law. Uh, a couple of other people besides yourself have pointed out in print that uh, the IRS is unable to point to the words that say we're supposed to pay a tax on our wages. Or tax on, on anything. That's not a whole lot of things. Yeah, according to the Supreme Court, income is corporate gain. Are you a corporation? No, I'm a person. I'm a human being. That's right. You're a human I being. Used to, I used to be a, a president of a corporation, but that was because that they made me president and told me to disband the corporation, which I did. Well, good for you. And then we all became <laughs> human beings. Good for you. Well, I thank you for your call, Glenn. I appreciate your uh, input, as always. It well, is you're a great guy, and I appreciate you being out there and talking to the world. Well, thank you very much. Good night, sir. Good night. 520-333-4578. Glenn uh, is the publisher of our local newspaper, the Round uh, Valley Paper, and that's the name of the Round Valley Paper. And... Uh, it's uh, one of the greatest newspapers in the world, in my estimation. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello, Bill. Hello. Uh, I have a question. Uh, the United Nations was set up by, we know who, I mean, uh, anti-American people. The UN, or the NATO, under the auspices of the United Nations, is that completely autonomous from the mm. United Nations? No. No, they were formed under the auspices of and in accordance with the United Nations Charter. And they must obey all of the rules and all of the uh, resolutions that have been passed and put into place by the United Nations, all of which they are breaking right now. In fact, they're breaking their own charter, which is the uh, North Atlantic Treaty. NATO is the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. They're breaking their own charter, their own treaty, and I've put links to all of these things on our website. If you'll go there, harvest-trust.org, you can read it and see for yourself. William Jefferson Clinton, once again, is the biggest liar existing on the face of this earth. He is a war criminal committing naked aggression, has committed open warfare against a sovereign independent nation, unprovoked, without a declaration of war by Congress against the United Nations Charter and against the North Atlantic Treaty. Well, then how can he have the power? You ask him. Ask him. You're asking the wrong guy. I don't know. You see, up until not too long ago, I thought that the, this, this nation was a nation under law. I am quickly learning that not only is this nation not under law, but they make up the laws as they go along, and, and, and none of it is written down. And by golly, if, if, you, if they consider you to be an enemy or be politically correct, they'll make up laws to destroy you. I'm sure of that. Well, is there any point, was there any point in history or recent history where, let's say, NATO 
did something that was contrary to the United Nations? Never. NATO, according to its own charter, is a defensive organization. And it only has authority over the signatory nations, that is, the nations that signed the treaty. And what the treaty does is it pledges the resources of all of the signatory nations in case one or more of those nations are attacked unprovoked by any outside or inside source and that all the member nations will come to help defend that nation. They have no authority over any nation that is not signatory to the treaty, and they have no authority to go outside the bounds of the United Nations Charter or the North Atlantic Treaty. And they've done, they've, they've done all of that. Well, they're awful quiet on that, Ed. Well, that's because nobody knows enough to ask any questions. They just believe what they're told like stupid animals. Well, what, what I see going on in Kosovo, or Kosovo, at what point are we going to be the, the point that this is going to take place? And what are you talking about? At what point are we going to be what point that this is what's going to take place? What's going to happen here in America that was set off UN troops being sent here? And, uh, you know, it would be a, a riot or... Can be anything. They could do it tomorrow morning if they want. They've already set the precedent that Bill Clinton can order anybody to do whatever he wants, no matter what the law says, no matter what treaty says, no matter what the United Nations says, no matter what the Constitution says, and nobody gives a damn. Nobody. Well, we're in dire straits. Yes, we are. I think destruction is pretty much imminent, it seems. It's called the New World Order. World Government. This is establishing the police force and the rights of that police force to exercise control over anybody in any nation in the world under any circumstances, regardless of the law, regardless of, of uh, anything. Well, <laughs> and if they get away with it, 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 it the world is history. We're heading there. We're almost there now. Yeah, I know it. Well, thank you very much. You cleared that up for me. What I've been warning people about for years is finally coming to pass. And uh, if they get away with this, then uh, if you're a patriot, they'll do the same thing to you here in this country. Well, that's for sure. Well, now, 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 now listen, to, listen to the Communist News Network, how they keep repeating the word nationalist, nationalistic. Milosevic is a nationalistic I've dictator. Heard, okay. Nationalist, nationalist, patriot, patriotic. They're, they're demonizing, they're getting the population ready to make this country the biggest cemetery for patriots on the face of this earth. Well, heaven forbid, but I don't think there's any, going to be any way we're going to avoid this. And there's nobody going to be left unscathed, I don't think. No, it's going to be one hell of a fight. I have no idea who's going to win or who's going to lose, but I tell you what, it's going to be an awful lot of suffering. Well, either way. The older I get, and I'm 48, and the more I've thought about it, and there are very few things to die for, but freedom is definitely one of them. Freedom is the okay. ultimate thing to die for, because without freedom, you have nothing else. Well, it just takes a while for that to sink in, but when you can see the point coming where they're being taken, <coughs> and you know at some point you're going to have to make a stand. Yeah. You have to come right into your own thinking and have to come to grips on that that you have to draw the line in the sand. Yep. And that's where it's at for a lot of people, I think. Better make it for freedom because without freedom, you have nothing else. Without freedom, that means you're under the control of somebody else. And if they say you can't have a family, you can't have a family. If they say you can't have children, you can't have children. If they say you can't own a house, you can't own a house. If they say you can't go to school, you can't go to school. If they say you've got to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and work uh, 18 hours a day uh, planting turnips, then you've got to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and work 18 hours a day planting turnips. Freedom. Freedom is what it's all about. And without freedom, you have nothing, nothing. And if you're not willing to die for freedom, you cannot and will not ever have it. Who could live under those conditions? Those, to me, would be unfair. Lots of people all over the world are living under those conditions right now. Willingly? I doubt very seriously if it's willingly. But after generations, you probably grow to accept it. Well, it's a matter of education, isn't it? Yes, it is, indoctrination. If they don't know anything else, then that becomes 
the ultimate uh, thing that, that they know. That becomes what they know, and that becomes all that there is, because there isn't anything else. If they're not taught anything else, if they don't know anything else, if they've never seen anything else. Well, I guess that's why they refer to people as sheep and cattle and herds and the masses and everything else. And yeah. Basically, that's what we are. It's dehumanizing. Whenever you hear anybody, radio talk show host, or you see it in print, or you hear it on the news, or you hear some politician refer to the people as the masses, they are intentionally dehumanizing people. The masses are no different than the herd. Right. And, and uh, so when you're dehumanized, it's easy to do whatever they want to you because there's no conscience uh, uh, rebellion against it. Well, I'll get off the air, Bill. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for calling. They're the most educational people that I've ever listened to on the radio, and they God bless and protect you and your family. Thank well, you very much. Thank you very much. I uh, certainly hope God does protect at least my family. <laughs> I love them more than anything that there is. Annie and, and, and Allison and uh, Dorothy, whom you know as Pooh, are, are, are everything to me. My fate is sealed simply because I dared to get on the radio and tell the truth for all these years. Uh, <laughs> there's no way that they're going to let me off the hook. Good evening. You're on the air. Oh, hi. I was just kind of wondering, uh, all, all in all, the, the, the whole bit about Kosovo, what, what, what would your uh, take on what should we do about the situation there? Nothing. It's none of our business. Well, I mean... If you look at it at face value, it's none of our business. And what we're doing violates every law, starting with the Constitution for the United States of America, the United Nations Charter, and the North Atlantic Treaty. Either we're a nation of law and a people of law, or we're just a bunch of outlaw jerk uh, little Hitlers that are going to go around and shove our will down everybody else's throat. It's none of our business. And there were not this flood of refugees, and nobody was going around killing anybody in Kosovo until the NATO SS Nazi air power started bombing all over the place. Did you hear what I said? Help them. Do you want? Do you want to disobey the law? Oh yeah, I do every day, nearly. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, so you so you, an, so you believe in so you believe in anarchy? No, not at all. I mean, well, if you believe in disobeying the law, doing whatever you want to do against the law, whenever you want to do it, that is anarchy, isn't it? That means you could go out and do whatever you want to people. No, I don't do anything to people. Never. Doesn't sound like you've really thought this thing through very well. Oh, I thought it through very well. The past you have? Here. Is it against the United Nations Charter? I don't know that that really matters. Oh, you don't know that it matters? No, I, I don't know. So, so there's a law that says you can't do something, and you're saying it doesn't matter if you really want to do it. No, that's not what I'm Is it against the North Atlantic Treaty, which is NATO? I'm saying, is, is, right it, or is, wrong? It? is that more important than law? I would think so. No, the, the law has to be what we go by, or else we are subject to the will of whoever comes along that wants to do whatever. Well, are we anyway? It doesn't matter. It's none of our business what's going on over there. Milosevic is the elected lawful head of the Yugoslavian government. So, should we have never gone to uh, Europe in World War II? So we have just stayed in the Pacific Theater. Yes, we were attacked by Japan. Yes, yeah, so, so should we have let uh, Europe uh, be overrun by Hitler at, at that time? How do, you know, how, how do you know Europe was going to be overrun by Hitler? It pretty much was. Well, pretty much was. Why? Uh, because the Europeans... By Germany. It because, was. Because the Europeans elected to let him do it. Well, England, could have, England could have stopped them. So mm, could, yes and no. Yeah, no, yes. They absolutely or did not. Saying, uh, so some uh, woman that's raped, uh, let the rapist do it. That's no, 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 no. Rape is against the law. <laughs> well, I, I don't imagine that uh, Poland really enjoyed uh, being occupied. 
I, I, you know, I mean, it's, again, it comes back to my point about the argument about the law. Whether the government agrees with something and make the law about it doesn't make it right. Now, does it? Let me ask you something. Sure. What does the Constitution say about who can declare war? Congress. Congress uh, war has not been declared since 1944, has it? What difference does that make? Who does the Constitution say can declare war? Congress. Is the Constitution the supreme law of our land? Yes and no. No, 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 not yes and no. It absolutely is. Well, it uh, gives the federal government... Their no, it is the on. absolute supreme law of this land. It is the government. It defines the government. Except for the various states of the Union, which... The Supreme, the, the federal government. We're not talking about the states. We're talking about the United States of America. Well, what is that but the various states? No, it's not. It is the United States of America. It is a separate state of its own accord defined in the Constitution for the United States of America. When all of the several states decide to go to war, they decide it through their representatives in Congress, and only Congress can declare war, not William Jefferson Clinton, and certainly not you. Oh, sure, I, I don't decide to. I, you know, I... Well, then how come Clinton can decide to? He's no different than you. Elected him. Pardon? Apparently, people elected him. People elected him to do what? To obey the Constitution. He took an oath, didn't he? More or less, but... Uh, you know what? You're about the stupidest person I've ever talked to. You go back and get your head together and get it out of your ass and then come back. You know something? If you want to call this broadcast, you've got to have an intelligent argument. This guy is very clearly an anarchist. He thinks the law should only be the law when it suits him. And if it doesn't suit him, then throw it out. It doesn't count. It doesn't matter. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want that kind of thinking, that's exactly the kind of thinking that Hitler had. And this guy was all for destroying Hitler. You can't have it both ways. Good evening, you're on the air. Hello, what would be the... 520-333-4578 is the number. If you want to propose anarchy, do it honestly. Call up as an anarchist. Say you believe in that. Say you believe that anybody who wants to uh, exert their will on somebody else should have the ability to do it and then back it up with an intelligent argument. Don't give me this two-faced, wishy-washy crap. It won't fit here. Good evening. You're on the air. Bill, it's an honor and a privilege to speak with you, sir. Thank you. First time caller. My question is, do you foresee a resumption of the military draft to get more people into NATO and Clinton's little war in the Balkans? No. The uh, whole purpose of the New World Order is disarmament of all nation states and all peoples and uh, to be able to totally control the people that they have under arms, and that requires an all-volunteer force. So I don't foresee a, 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 a resumption of the draft at all, because once you get ordinary citizens in there, they're going to stand up and say, hey, we're not going to do this. Screw you, this is wrong, I'm not going to do it. But as long as they have all-volunteer members in the armed forces who want to be there, who are uh, um, the little Hitlers in their mind, or they wouldn't, you know, want to be that. And the the armed forces, by the way, is a an indoctrination into socialism. If you become a career person in the armed forces, I never thought of this. You see, all the time I was in the armed forces, I was in the Air Force, uh, and then in the Navy. I spent 15 years in the armed forces, and I didn't realize I was serving in a socialist system until I got out and started really studying socialism. And that's exactly what it is. So they will do what they're told. Interesting. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. You um, you turned on a few light bulbs, sir. Thank you. Appreciate you speaking to you. Good day. Thanks for calling. Five two zero three 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 four five 
seven eight. This whole thing in Kosovo has been engineered. If you go to our website, harvest-trust.org, and uh, read what we have there, you'll find that this whole Kosovo war was planned in 1996 at the meeting of the Bilderbergers. It was published after that meeting. I did a show on it right here on this broadcast, and many other people reported on it. It was reported in the spotlight. I don't like the spotlight because it's a racist publication, but nevertheless, it was reported accurately what they decided at the 1996 meeting of the Bilderbergers, and that was to have a war in Kosovo. Good evening. You're on the air. Hey, Mr. Cooper. Yes, sir. How's everything going? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you hit the nail on the head. I've been there. I was there these, these sheep for well, the last six months, that's when these body bags started coming back here, because I knew they were going to be, gonna be bringing them back over here. But these fools, and then you think, when you think here in Detroit now, they got the, the mayor and the governor going around trying to get people to join the nation of God. And we're going to send you all to college. I said, you go to college all right and they're in a box. Yeah, well, Look, man. this thing in Kosovo has all the potential to s turn into World War III. And uh, uh, we are going to send in combat troops, and we are going to experience tremendous numbers of casualties. The Serbs are well known for their ability to fight on the ground. They are brave. They are daring. Uh, they are deadly. Their whole history. Can you imagine that one little group of people as guerrillas held down over 20 Nazi German divisions in World War II all by themselves? Man, they go to book on guerrilla warfare. You better believe it. And you know, if we I... go in there, we're just going to just absolutely regret it forever. And, um, you know, the whole world is beginning to hate us now. Look, let me tell you this. You know, when, when, when Germany surrendered to the, uh, to the Allies back in 19, 1945, uh, my, uh, one of the envoys of an idiot told uh, I had my guy in my guy in the Germany surrendered today. You know what he said? No, guess what his reply was? What was it? Now you will become the Germans and keep walking. And Americans have become the Germans, buddy. Yeah? Well, You're worse than Germany. You're right about that. You're absolutely correct. Because I, as a matter of fact, I was, you know, I was in the Navy in World War II starting. Yeah. I was already dying there. But, but man, Roosevelt wouldn't even tell us that he had heard on the 4th of December that we were going to be bombed in Pearl Harbor. Yeah, they knew it in advance. He, he let it happen because he wanted to bring the United States into the war. The American people didn't want to go into the war. If the Japanese hadn't attacked us at Pearl Harbor, we would never have entered that war in Europe. You are right. Absolutely right. So, this is what I got to, all about to tell you. Keep up the good work. I mean, I, <laughs> I got to get me a computer where I can get on your, get on your way with me. Well, thank you, sir. My son, my son is already on it, though. Well, good. So, take care. Thank you very much. Keep on blocking out the signal. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying very hard. Good luck. Thank you for calling. God bless. God bless you, my friend. You know, uh, <laughs> that guy that called earlier, I gave him every opportunity to make some kind of a logical, reasonable, intelligent argument for what he was saying. And he couldn't do it. All he could uh, come up with was... Uh, <laughs> uh, never mind. Good evening, you're on the end. Uh, Bill? Yes, sir. Uh, enjoy your program. Uh, you were talking about inalienable and unalienable rights. Yes. Previously, they're the same thing. No, they're not. Yes, I just looked up the dictionary. The, uh... You weren't listening to what I said. You have to look in the dictionary that was in use and at the meanings of the words that were in use at the time they were written. Okay, I stand corrected there. The meanings of the words in our language have been so changed over the years that they don't even apply in a court of law with the same meaning anymore. Yeah, I know that. It's a method of changing the the beliefs and the and the political orientation of a people by changing the meaning of the words that they use over a long period of time. Okay. So if you really want to understand what I'm talking about, you go get yourself an 1828 or earlier dictionary 
and start looking up the meanings of words, and you will be absolutely amazed at what you're going to discover. Well, I'll try that. Good for you. Okay, thanks. Sir. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Inalienable and unalienable, ladies and gentlemen, do not mean the same thing. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight. Good evening. You're on the air. Mr. Cooper, always a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you. I'm calling from Pennsylvania. Um, I heard that they said it may be unleanable rights. Have you heard that one? Well, that's what I said. Unleanable. Uh, unleanable. I said that. Okay, because it's a short wave. I couldn't quite make out what you were saying. Yeah, unleanable. Can't take it away. Uh, also, that guy that was on earlier that was not only annoying you, but everybody else with an earshot on the radio. Um, see, this is what's wrong with this country. The judge tells them when they're in a jury, no, 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 don't ignore the, ignore the law. I'm going to tell you how to interpret it. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you how you can rule. And I'm going to tell you what you can examine as evidence and what you can't, and uh, what you can think about and what you can't think about. And that's all wrong. And that's how we get these hairy decisions, because... People aren't looking at the law. They're looking at googly eyes from the judge or the prosecutor or the defending attorney. They're stupid. and they don't look at the law. They're ignorant, apathetic, and stupid. That's absolutely correct. Uh, a great program. God bless you and all. Thank you very much. Thank you for your call. 520-333-4578 is the number. We'll be taking your calls for the whole rest of this broadcast. Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, hi, Bill. Joel in Wisconsin. Hi, Joel. Um, I just recently, I've had this book a while. I, I just recently uh, uh, picked it up, though, because I haven't really, I haven't read it yet. I've read which it. book? Are, it's called which? New Lives for Old. Oh, yeah. By Golitsyn. Anatoly Golitsyn, yes. And I was, uh, was thumbing through it, you know, and uh, on page 266, I'm just, the disinformation strategic role of Yugoslavia. He covers an awful lot in here about Yugoslavia. Sure, the Balkans are the keystone uh, between the, the Europe and, and the East. And uh, uh, whoever is going to control uh, the world has got to destabilize and control the Balkans, or they can't do it. And that's the conclusion that he has in here. Yeah. Um, that's the conclusion. From what I've read, I haven't read all of it yet, but I've been thumbing through it, and I've, it's very interesting. I just wanted to recommend it to people to read because it really gives a person a, a much better perspective of the type of deception and, and absolute manipulation that's going on out here. Yeah, New Lies for Old and uh, the Perestroika Deception, both by Anatoly Galitsyn who was one of the highest-ranking Russian defectors to the United States. He defected in December of 1961. I studied his case when I was a member of the Office of Naval Intelligence. Uh, I believed every single word that he told us. He was debunked in, at the highest circles in the government, and they ignored what he had to say. And what's happening now is a direct result of that. As a result of that, absolutely. In 1961, he defected from yeah. Finland. Yeah. Okay, that's all I wanted to say. I just wanted to mention it to the listening audience. Well, he defected that's from he defected from the Soviet Union through Finland. Right. But he was not a Finn. He was he was a Soviet. Right. He was a KGB uh, staff officer. Uh, yeah, high ranking counterintelligence and disinformation. I think. Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to let the the audience out there. They should everybody should get that book and read it because it's, <laughs> it's very interesting. Yeah, it's a lot about uh, Yugoslavia. <laughs> Illuminating to be sure. If you haven't read the Perestroika Deception, which followed that book, I suggest that you do that. And then I suggest that you read um, Gorbachev, Mikhail Gorbachev's book entitled Perestroika. Perestroika. Uh -huh. and, uh, and all of the pieces will come together. Gorbachev admits it right in there. He, he, okay. He, well, he, I'll uh, let somebody else get in there, but uh, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, we're, we're out here for you. I am anyway. Thank you. Bye. Appreciate that. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight. Good evening. You're on the air. Uh, this is Ken from South Carolina. Hi, Ken. Um, I heard a broadcaster today say we're getting ready to turn the Panama Canal over to Panama. Yes, that's been in the works for many, many years. I don't know how you feel about that, but I felt that it was their canal to start with. Well, it was. We went in there and we stole it and we manipulated uh, the 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 uh, politics and the wars and the economy and everything else and uh, um, you know pretty much 
we control just about every government to south of our border. Okay, but this host on the program wasn't taking calls today, so I wasn't able to call in and correct him. Uh, he said, we're getting ready to turn it over to Panama, and I was going to tell him, no, we're not. We're getting ready to turn it over to China. <laughs> well, uh, according to, uh, to, to what I've uh, been studying, you may be right. Well, that's what I've heard, that some Chinese company is, is probably going to end up running the canal. Well, you may be right. They've certainly gone in there, and they've put a lot of money in the right pockets, and uh, they have contracts, and they have... Uh, uh, land for bases, and uh, so that just might become a reality. Yep, and the caller who called in a few calls ago, that's the most ignorant one that I've ever heard. And But it doesn't surprise me because I know people just like that who uh, think that the government programs are great, and they, they love, a lot of people love the government programs and the system. And what amazed me is he really thinks that if the government or anybody in government uh, uh, believes that uh, that the law is not right and they want to do it different, that, that, that it's okay for them to just go ahead and do that. That's exactly what he was saying. And, you know, that's the way they operate, I believe, in England. I don't think they have a constitution. I think England is a democracy. We're, we are a republic. And that's correct. And, and England is also one of the most heavily taxed socialist systems in the world. I've been to England. I've talked to the people. They are not happy. I can tell you that yes. with, with their lot. They are, they are miser they're miserable. And uh, almost everything they earn goes to pay taxes and uh, they, they're just not a, a, a happy people. You're, you're, I believe that's true. And you see when they're a democracy like England, all they do is pass a law. They take everybody's guns away. And that's all they have to do is get 51%. Yeah, and, or anything else they want to do. And yeah, just take people's rights away. And that's a lot of people. They, a lot of people do believe our country is a democracy. Yeah. I mean, that's the ignorance. That's because that's what they hear repeated over and over again on the boob tube. And yeah. they've never read the Constitution. They certainly have never read Article 4, Section 4, which guarantees to every state a Republican form of government. Yeah. For, for any of these senators to go out there and carry around the Tenth, Com Tenth Amendment is a joke. Well, for me, a senator to open his mouth is a joke, to tell you the truth. They, they quit telling the truth many, many years ago. Well, one other thing that I'm going to look into, I don't know enough about it. Somebody said that the Sixteenth Amendment was never ratified. It never was ratified. And, uh, it, and because it was never ratified, according to the Constitution, it's not law. Not in, in any of the states, anyway. Okay. Well, I enjoy your program and keep up the good work. Thank you very much. 520-333-4578. Yeah, it's been proven by many people who have done the research. I've done the research. Uh, there was a book written, The Law That Never Was. Uh, um, there's no doubt whatsoever, just recently, a special agent of the Internal Revenue Service has come out publicly, has written a report to his superiors, after which he was forced to resign, and uh, he says the 16th Amendment was never ratified and therefore is not law. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, uh, Mr. Cooper. This is Helen from New York. Hi, Helen. I need you to talk a lot louder and turn off your radio. Hey, if you watch CNN for more than five minutes and you even have half a brain, uh, you, you know that you're being brainwashed. For instance, it's winter over there. They've been telling us about these terrible storms that they're having that's been hindering the bombing, right? Right. How come they keep showing us pictures of dead bodies in green grass? And then other dead bodies in snow with dead grass and dead vegetation and no leaves on the trees all around. And I could go on and on and on and on, but the, the, the stupid American sheeple don't ever catch any of this stuff because they have lost the ability to, for original thought many years ago. They cannot think. They can't put two and two together. They sit there in a trance and absorb and believe everything they're told and everything they see without question. 
It amazes me. It makes me cry sometimes. Well, I, I'm not one of those. I, I don't believe anything anymore. I swear. Good for I you. <laughs> all our media, including our, our local stations, are, are, are all programmed to tell us what we, they need us to know or want us to know. And I was wondering if you had any ideas on how we can turn some of this media around to tell us the truth. Yeah. See, you think that free speech means that the media owes you the truth. And that's not true. That's a lie. Free speech means you have the right to say whatever you want, whether it's true or false. If you want the people to hear the truth, you have to own the media. Publish a newsletter. Publish a newspaper. Start a low-power FM broadcasting station. Get an international broadcast like I have done. Start your own low-power television station in your area. And don't be afraid of the consequences. You can't be afraid. We're in a war. And if people don't start standing up and fighting this war with me and the other people who are fighting it and taking the same risk that we're taking, pretty soon you're going to find yourselves casualties, slaves, non-entities, are just plain flat dead. I agree with you completely. I, I just thought, you well, know, I, I, I am so sick of hearing that they're not, you know, government control. Ours is government control. Well, you're not government control. Start your own yeah. media. That's the answer. Okay. For all of you out there listening, start your own media. Do what I am doing. And don't be afraid. You're right. Hey, we appreciate you. Thank you very much. Okay, good night. I appreciate you. 520-333-4578 is the number. That's the answer, ladies and gentlemen. Don't sit around and wait for CNN to tell you the truth. They're never going to do it. It was started by Ted Turncoat, who married the communist Hanoi Jane Fonda and then sold it to the New World Order Corporation Time Warner, and you're sitting there waiting for CNN to tell you the truth? How dumb are you? Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, good evening, Bill. I just wanted to say I, I created my own media. I made a four by eight sheet of plywood, and it says uh, Bill Clinton, Adolf Hitler, World War Three, Illuminati. I listed the Bilderbergers, the whole group, and everything as much as I could put on there. And I went and stood on Pacific Coast Highway over the weekend, and everything's in three inch high letters. I mean, I got as much as I could, but people were stopping and, and looking at it and asking me questions. Well, good for you. So I, I commend you highly. It took guts, and it took courage, and it took uh, fortuitousness and, and insight for you to go out there and do that, and you're to be commended, and there should be millions of Americans doing that same thing. Absolutely. You know what I would recommend a lot of Americans do? Is make those little targets like that they're holding up in Belgrade. Yeah, let's all become targets. And, and, and just fold, you know, put, put one of those in the back of your car or just put anything. You know, those little Yugoslav flag, French, blue, white, and red. I like the targets. That's easy. Anybody, That's even easy. children can make those targets. We can put them on the back of our jackets, on the back of our shirts. On the, we can put them on car. the roof of our car, on the, on, the, on, the sides of our, on the sides of our doors, on our office doors. We can put those targets everywhere. In fact, that's what we're going to do, folks. That's it. We're starting it right now, tonight. This gentleman, it was his idea. Let's do it. Give him the credit. But let's put targets everywhere. Let's wear targets. Let's put targets on our doors. Let's put them on our cars. Let's put them on the top of our cars. Let's put them on our t-shirts, our jackets. Let's uh, put them on telephone poles. Put targets everywhere. Thanks, Bill. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. That was a great idea, and that's what we're going to do. I'm challenging all Americans tonight. In fact, everybody around the world, make targets and put them everywhere. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello, Bill. Hello. I'm calling from upstate New York, Binghamton, New York. Uh-huh. And I'm uh, very happy to hear your program. Thank you. I uh, called several years ago when you were on WWCR, and you went off the air on WWCR, and I, hit, and I could not find you on, on this shortwave frequency right here until tonight. And I just wanted to call up and say I'm very happy to hear you on the air because I uh, I like listening to you back then. And uh, I called up before, but I'm very happy to find, find you on the 7.214. No, 7.415. 7.14? 7.415. Okay, well, Bill, I'm very, I'm 
appreciative because I was I tried to listen to you shortly in the lap, but to be honest with you, you're the only I don't you know, you're the only one that never lied to me or you know to the people. So you're listener, you never did. And the other ones out there, they lie a lot. They like to sell products and. And, and you're the only one that told the truth and never compromised. Like, and that's what I appreciate about you. And I'm very happy to call you up and I like to listen. And and uh, and and uh, I know you tell you, all your people to do the research themselves. You say don't listen to me. You say you look it up. And I appreciate you for being very honest. And you know, I'm a little nervous, but I'm very happy to hear you on. And I'm, and I'm going to try to listen. I just found you. To, I was like scanning, and I just turned on this frequency here. And, and I'm very happy and, uh, Well, thank you. What are your hours? I'm on the East Coast. What are your hours? I don't know. Everybody just went on daylight savings time. I don't know what time I'm it is. I'm very happy to hear you out there. Where are you at? I have your number, and I just want to say thank you. You're the only one that told... All the, you're the only one that never lied. And that's... And I'm, you know, well, thank you. I'm thank very you. happy. Thank, uh, I'm glad to hear you. Don't thank you very much, and hopefully I'll call and make more sense next time, but I'm, I'm just happy to hear you. That's okay. Thank you very much. Bye. And I never will lie to you, ladies and gentlemen. Occasionally, I will make a mistake. I'm a human person. I make mistakes. And when I make a mistake, if you'll correct me and, and prove it to me. I mean, don't just call me up and say you made a mistake. you got to prove it to me now. If you can prove it to me, I get on the air and correct it with no hesitation, no embarrassment whatsoever, because that's what I want to do is tell the truth. Good evening. You're on the air. I need you to talk a lot louder. Put the phone right in front of your mouth and talk real loud. Hello? Yeah, okay, I'm turning my radio down. Uh, anyway, uh, for a lot of the people I've tried to convince that the... Uh, I need you to talk a lot louder, please. For a lot of people uh, that don't believe in the <laughs> Council of Foreign Relations... Boy, some of you people just don't know what talk loud means. I mean, you just can't do it, can you? It just blows my mind. Go ahead. I'm trying to talk loud. But you're not doing it. But go ahead. I, it's, it's apparent to me that it's not going to happen, so go ahead. I don't know if you've ever uh, looked into the Foreign Affairs magazine and uh, their own writings from the Council of Foreign Relations. I've been taking it for years and have recommended it to everybody in the listening audience for at least five or six years. Uh-huh. And, well, anyway, uh, back in time there, there was the 100-day economic agenda, which he's been holding to, the uh, reshaping of the Middle East, which was nothing more than the plan months before the Persian Gulf War, yeah. and uh, the population threat, uh, the whole nine yards, there's a wealth of information in these things that seem to be a little ahead of their time. Well, they always are. Usually, whatever they print in uh, foreign relations comes to pass within two They are the government. i got to turn this pot down. I, I, the reason you could hear him well, folks, because I had the pot turned up so high that if I spoke, it blew my ears out. I just can't do it. So I got the pot back down there. Go ahead. Uh, all right. That's all I want to do is bring attention that if they want proof from the horse's mouth, all they have to do is get a few of these uh, foreign affairs magazines. Not that I want them to uh, contribute to them, but uh, to really learn that these people do indeed forecast our future. Sure they do. Yeah. Okay, well, that's all I had to mention. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for calling. Uh, I'm going to take a little break, folks. Like I said at the beginning of the broadcast, I'm really exhausted. So I'm going to take a little break. I'm going to go uh, uh, get some uh, something to drink here so that my throat doesn't get dry. And I'll be right back after this short pause, and we will continue the phone thing. Oh, and by the way, sorry, Alan, uh, this daylight savings time just got me all screwed up. I'm sitting here waiting for 7 o'clock, <laughs> and it's 6.14, which means it's 14 minutes too late, but here it is. 
You're listening to WBCQ, Monticello, Maine, USA. This is the Hour of the Time, and I'm William Cooper. I don't know if you can hear the words like I can, but that is heavy. You know nothing about the forces that are causing the disruption over there. You cannot win this war. You are walking in darkness. <laughs> I wish you could hear it. And this is, uh, you know, this is written and performed by people who come from there. They know what they're talking about. We don't. We don't. And uh, when we profess that we think we know what we're talking about, about that area, we're lying to ourselves and everybody else. It's none of our business. Period. It's been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years. And we're not going to solve it. They need to solve it amongst themselves. 
Kosovo was an autonomous state. Listen to me very carefully. Kosovo was an autonomous state. The Kosovars were not, were not being picked on by the Serbs. The Serbs were not so-called ethnic cleansing them. They had representation within the government. They had their own government, as a matter of fact. You know how they lost their autonomy? Because they put together a rebel force, a Marxist, terrorist, drug-dealing, criminal organization known as the Kosovo Liberation Army, which rose up against the lawfully elected, established government of both Kosovo and Yugoslavia and began to terrorize people, and bomb, and kill, and shoot. And so the Serbs took away the autonomy of Kosovo and sent in police and military to put down the KLA. The small number of refugees that had left before NATO began its bombing were families and members of families of the KLA who were operating unlawfully as a rebellious force dealing in drugs. They were Marxist terrorists. They were bombing people, killing people, trying to make Kosovo an independent nation. They started the trouble. The long lines of refugee and the so-called ethnic cleansing and the concentration camps and all of these other things did not happen until NATO went in there and tried to exert their will on those people. And the Yugoslavian people said, no, we're not going to have it. We're going to solve this problem whether you want it solved or not. And since you won't let us do it in the way that we were doing it, We'll do it this way. And they're not guilty of all of these so-called crimes. A lot of the pictures you're seeing are lies. Propaganda lies. It's winter over there. It's the middle of winter. Heavy rain. Cold. Snowstorms. And they're showing us pictures of dead bodies laying in green grass. Uh-huh, uh-huh, what you want to bet? Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> you see, I can think, I can see, I can reason. How do you know that these guys in the black masks, the black ski masks, are Serbian police? How do you know they're not Kosovo Liberation Army how do you know they're not CIA operatives? How do you know they're not the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms or the Federal Bureau of Investigation, all of whom wear black ski masks? I almost fell out of my chair the other night when Vice President Gore said, we have to stop these people from wearing black ski masks <laughs> and breaking down doors in the middle of the night. That's what they do right here in this country. The government forces wear black ski masks and break down doors in the middle of the night without warrants, seize property, take people, destroy their lives, kill them, murder them. Gee, why is it NATO here? What's the matter with all the fools in this country? I mean, they just eat this stuff. Oh, they're wearing black ski masks. Oh, they must be terrible people. Hey, wake up, dummy. They wear black ski masks here. They got a SWAT team in your hometown that wears black ski masks and dresses up like ninja turtles and goes out in the middle of the night and kills people. Wake your dumb ass up. Wake your dumb ass up. I am sick of the ignorance and the stupidity of this country. What's the matter with you? Oh, don't get me started. 520-333-4570. See what I mean, folks? When I said I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I'm not kidding. I'm just sick of this crap. I'm sick of it. 
Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, hi, Bill. Hi. This is unconfirmed. I mean, I'm looking at a Yugoslav uh, website, but there's uh, an article in it that's uh, Dateline Geneva, April 5th, by Itar Tass. And it's stating that uh, Helmut Schmidt, the former uh, federal chancellor of Germany, has expressed regret over the fact that the European countries found themselves, quote, under the patronage of the United States, unquote, in the face of the crisis in Kosovo. And he winds up, uh, or the article winds up giving a quote, supposedly by Schmidt, I haven't confirmed this, but it says, quote, acting under the patronage of Americans, we showed disrespect for international law and the UN Charter. Schmidt stressed that NATO countries have found themselves, quote, outside all rules. I find that quite amazing coming from Helmut Schmidt. Yes, uh, it, it is, but he actually did say it. Those are accurate court, uh, quotes, and it, it's an accurate story. Amazing. Bill, maybe I, I could relate to the listeners a, a, a brief uh, history about uh, Hitler's takeover of Croatia and what transpired shortly thereafter. Go ahead. Uh, apparently, give, give, me, give me some rest. Go ahead, I dare you. Give me some rest. Okay. <laughs> the Croatians welcomed in the Nazis just like the Czechs did. I don't know if they threw down rose petals in front of him when he when he uh, his forces entered the country, and subsequently uh, a government was set up somewhat like the Vichy government in France, uh, known as the Ustashi. And the uh, Ustashi set up a, a concentration camp subsequently, where uh, both Jews and Serbs uh, died in those concentration camps. What happened in in uh, uh, Serbia? was that the, the then government was under great pressure. Albania had been taken by uh, the Mussolini's fascists. Croatia had now fallen without a fight. And the then leader, whose name escapes me, signed a document saying that Serbia would, would succumb without a fight too. But the very night, I believe, of the signing of the document... Yeah, was, that, that didn't happen. I can tell you that for sure. The document wasn't signed? No, no, no. The, the, the document was signed, but the Serbs did not do that. They right. fought. That, that very night, there was a coup d'etat, and uh, the Serbs, uh, you know, figuratively spit in Hitler's face. And so Hitler's uh, Luftwaffe uh, shortly uh, Stuka bombed Belgrade. Uh, yeah. The casualties of that bombing, I, I can't recall, but the number of 51,000 people sticks out in my mind. I'm not sure about that figure. But yeah, they, they literally bombed it to the ground. There was not a wall standing. Uh, I, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, they bombed it out of existence. There was nothing left. So ima imagine this context. The When the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia began to fall apart, I believe against the advisement of the United States State Department, Germany recognized Croatia. And this immediately, uh, to be sure, came, you know, caused fear in the Serbians, as though uh, Germany was ex again extending its hegemony into the area. Mm -hmm. uh, which, which what, that's what they were doing. Let's be honest about it. Pre precisely. And uh, now, incredibly, NATO has undertaken this bombardment of Serbia proper at the exact same point in the calendar year that the Germans had bombed uh, Belgrade, as I had described. Yeah. Um, and so if, if, if anybody, had, not to mention that the KLA is active in Kosovo, mirroring the events of uh, um, what the fascists in Italy did, uh, the bombings are coming from uh, Aviano Air Base in Italy. And so if anybody wants to appreciate the, the, the depth of feeling being engendered in the Serbian people, uh, who are well aware of those events. Those events are as important to them as uh, Lexington and Concord are to any uh, uh, son or, uh, or daughter of the American Revolution, probably more so, uh, given the proximity and time. And if anybody thinks that uh, the Serbian people are not prepared to fight... Uh, They'll fight to the death of the last man, woman, and child. Indeed. And they've proven that. Many, have, many, I, I, many times in their history, they've proven that they're willing to do it and that they will do it if necessary. I, I've had the I've had the pleasure to meet uh, uh, Serbians here in New York City, and uh, it, it's been a great pleasure. Um, they they know where they stand. Uh, many of them are considering whether they uh, need to return at this hour. Uh, many of them, in fact, weren't particularly enamored of Milosevic, uh, but they they. Uh, 
definitely are having to uh, think hard about what choices they're going to make. I think. Let, now listen to me, because I'm going to, I think. I'm not making a prediction, but this is just a feeling that I have. That if this continues, a lot of Americans will form a, a sort of a loose American brigade and will go over there and fight with the Serbs. You watch it, it, it will happen. I believe it. I, I, I have felt the urge this last weekend to go myself, to tell you the truth. I, I feel the same way. I, I went with the Serbian community here in New York by bus down to Washington, D.C. yesterday and participated in a protest in front of the White House. Approximately 1,500 people turned out. Uh, oh, forget. it wasn't on CNN. No, CNN uh, wasn't there, and I didn't see any correspondence. It wasn't on ABC, it wasn't on NBC, and it certainly wasn't on CBS, and it wasn't on the Communist News Network. I wonder why. No, that wouldn't be an event they wanted to show, particularly because... But I thought they were objective news reporting organizations. We know better than that. It was, it was touching, too. <laughs> it was organized by the Serbian Church um, in... Uh, Washington, D.C. There were Orthodox uh, um, clergy who officiated over a service, and uh, I just hope that uh, listeners attempt to do everything that they can to uh, uh, try to do something. And if, if they're in a large city and they call the Serbian Orthodox Cathedral, you know, it wasn't even on CNN. I think everybody in this listening audience ought to start calling uh, CNN. Any time that CNN has a show where you can call in, call. Any time that uh, that uh, um, the C-SPAN has a show where you can call in, call and and ask point blank. Why is it that the American press is not reporting the huge anti-war demonstrations in this country, all over this country, and they are taking place all over this country? I have no doubt. Um, there's, there's, a, there's another issue that, that is, is driving the, the domestic politics here on, on this issue, um, and that is the perceptions on the part of Jewish Americans. And if, if there are any Jewish Americans listening, I, I oh, they've been brainwashed. They've been told it's another Holocaust. Yeah. So without thinking whatsoever, without doing any investigation of their own, oh, oh, it's another Holocaust. Oh, we must support it. Oh. In, indeed. Uh, they, it, they make me want to puke. Gag me with a spoon. <laughs> I'm sick of it. The stupidity, I'm sick of it. No wonder they're always persecuted. If only, if only many of these Jews knew that the Serbian Jetniks and Partisans... Oh, heck, they're anti-gun. I mean, if they'd have known something about guns uh, during World War II, you wouldn't see pictures of them being led down the street by old guards carrying rifles with no bolts in the rifles. They would have known they didn't have to go because the guy couldn't shoot them. But they didn't know nothing about guns, and they still don't know nothing about guns. They're anti-gun. They're pro-enslavement of the whole human race. I'm sick of it. it. It would appear to be so. I've, I've asked many Jewish friends that that, that uh, question. I asked them, do they not see that were the Jewish people in Europe uh, uh, more of a mind to have defended themselves that a lot of those atrocities uh, could not have taken place? Well, thank God for the Jewish militia in the Warsaw Ghetto. The Jewish, listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, it was a Jewish militia in the Warsaw Ghetto that rose up against the Germans and took a lot of Germans out of the fight against the Allied uh, forces and, uh, and kept them occupied. And yeah, they suffered for it, but by God, they maintained their dignity and they stood up and they fought back. And I'm proud of those Jewish militiamen and women who and did that. Would one rather die with a gun in their hand fighting or die of starvation being worked to death? Or, or perhaps die in an oven or with a bullet in the back of the head while you're kneeling on the ground? Why do people do that? If I know somebody's going to shoot me in the back of the head and they tell me to kneel, I'm going to say, screw you, and I'm going to spit in their face. Absolutely. Why in hell am I going to kneel on the ground so they can shoot me in the back of the head? What kind of stupidity is this? I'm going to spit right in their face and say, Hell no, if you're going to shoot me, I'm going to stand up and fight you like a man. And then I'm going to jump his bones. 
and I'm going to hurt him as hard as I can, and if I can, I'll bite his nose right off his face before he shoots me. What, what's, what's sad to me is that the, 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 the people who are going to prosecute this war against the Serbians, perhaps on the ground, the officer corps of the United States Army, they know the facts. They've sold out a long time ago. Or they wouldn't be there doing that. It's unconstitutional. They all know it. Well, no, they all know it's against the NATO treaty. They have to study these things to be an officer. What I mean is they understand how vigorously the Serbians will fight. Well, so what? If they're already traitorous and they're going against the law that they know is the law and they're doing all this willingly, who gives a damn? Here's my they deserve to get beat. They deserve to get beat. Absolutely, but my point is, unfortunately, I'm, I'm horrified, particularly when I see these Apache helicopters going in. You know who I'm horrified about? The poor enlisted men who are depending on their officers to tell them the truth. I feel for those men. They're going to find out a, a reality they didn't know about. I feel for them. My heart goes out to them. I wish I could do something to prevent the slaughter that's going to happen, but it's going to happen. Indeed, and I, I, but I don't feel sorry for the officers. They deserve to get their asses kicked. They deserve to get literally beat into the ground. They are they are blatantly anti-constitutional traitors. They're going against the Constitution for the United States. They're going against the NATO Charter. They're going against the United Nations Charter. They all know it. But oh my goodness, if I speak up, I might not reach retirement. That's and that's true. really what they're there for. What, what I meant was, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that they're not going to try to fight in a manly fashion. They're going to fight from helicopter platforms, uh, and the, the sophistication of those helicopter platforms, I'm, I'm, I'm horrified to think what they can achieve with them if they're used judiciously. And... Uh, well, you, you have to understand that the Serbs have the Soviet shoulder-fired equivalent to our stinger. Have you ever heard a statistic about how many they might have in the field? No, but I happen to also know that Russia is resupplying Yugoslavia. They are doing it despite what they say. Remember now, every time Russia ever helped a revolutionary force or another government, they've always denied that they were doing it. Always throughout their history. And I'm telling you right now, they are supplying the Serbs the Serbs now when see they've been standing off with these with these platforms that were firing cruise missiles from hundreds of miles away right and so they were in no danger now if they go in there with Apache helicopters and low flying uh, uh, bombers and uh, 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 all of these uh, you, you know anti troop anti tank type aircraft weapons they're going to start feeling. Uh, the, some things that they haven't felt before. They're going to get shot down. And when that starts to happen, oh my goodness, did you see the millions of yellow ribbons for these three idiots that went into Yugoslavia on a lark? They left their, their patrol by themselves and went across the border. Uh, I guess they were feeling really strong and tough and brave, and they got captured. And, and uh, look what happened. Oh, everybody's just crying, and they're parading their parents and their relatives all over the networks and, and the news and the, the interview shows and Larry King Live and all this kind of stuff, and they're showing millions of yellow ribbons tied all over everything across the country. What in the world are these fools going to do when people start dying? Maybe the good news, then, is that the officer corps will finally stand up to Clinton uh, if they if, if if they cannot impress upon Clinton that there's no way that he can force them to prosecute a ground war. Oh, they're they're waiting for it. They're looking forward to it. Yeah. Now, well, remember, I was in the military for 15 years. I worked very closely with officers. Right. Not so much in the Air Force, but in the Navy all the time. I had my own command in Vietnam. I was a river patrol boat captain. Right. I worked on the bridge. I was the petty officer in charge of the bridge on just about every ship that I served on. I was the petty officer in charge of the command center at St. Pac Fleet, Commander-in-Chief of the United States Pacific Fleet. I know how they think. I know what's going on. And I'm going to tell you right now, 
that according to military regulations, they must have a war every so many years or they cannot promote officers to field grade rank or to certain command positions that absolutely require by regulation that they have combat experience. So they're all looking forward to it because that's their road to promotion. And the higher the rank they get, the higher their retirement check will be after 20 years. I had no idea. It's true, my friend. And if you can get an officer to sit down with you and tell you the truth honestly, he'll tell you that. Well, on that note, I guess I'll leave you, Bill. Okay. Thanks for calling. Thank you. And remember, folks, now it's no longer a military of citizens, it's an all-volunteer force, warmongers who want to be military, who want to go to war, and who want to kill people. That's what they train for all the time. It's their life. Good evening. You're on the air. Yes, Bill. Um, I heard today uh, several, a couple of places, actually, that Greece is reporting that over 50 uh, allied or NATO troops have already died. We've already covered that. Yes, it's been. Re okay, it's, I caught the show late. It's uh, been reported, but not verified. Yes, I, I, I understand that. Uh, also, the uh, Britain today uh, is talking about Harriers and the fact that they haven't dropped a single bomb in eight days. <laughs> well, good for them. I, I, I applaud them. That's you know that's that's very uh, good for them. But I think they're blaming it on the weather. Well, no, actually, there's that and uh, the fact that uh, they're supposedly moving all their armament at night so they can't find them. Okay, but what it sounds more like to me is that they're, that they're afraid to risk any of their hardware, for the most part, yeah, and, and this is all for show. Yeah, could, a, 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 could be. I mean, I mean, why not let the stupid Americans take all the risk? Why not? Well, Britain's playing a bigger hand than we are, practically, in many, in many areas. Well, I, I don't know. You know, and, and they're a part of NATO. And Tony Blair and, and Bill Clinton getting together and saying, look, we want to well, we want to rule this part of the world. <laughs> For the most part. Tony Blair is, uh, England is nothing less today than a puppet of the United States of America. England is a third world nation. It is not a world power, will never be a world power again. England does what Washington tells them to do. England is a socialist, new world order country. And to get, get all of these historic things that Americans have cluttered in their, in their minds about England out of your mind. It's all bullshit. England is today a third world, third rate country. They don't control anybody or anything. They take their orders from Washington, D.C. I, I hear you on that. And on that, I just, you know, I didn't hear the show earlier if, if you had covered the fact that... Uh, yes, we did. Take, the, take, my word, take my word for it. Don't waste more air time on it. Take okay, my word uh, for it. Also, MSNBC was reporting <laughs> in an apartment building, and, and, and uh, uh, the Serbs allowed a TV crew in the... Uh, uh, let the uh, press see uh, an apartment building that was totally devastated. Uh, they call it an accidental bombing. <laughs> accidental bombing. Uh, the news anchor at MSNBC, I think Brian Williams, said it was an accidental bombing. <laughs> I find that to be comical. Well, it's what happens in war. You drop a bomb and you think it's you want it to hit a certain place, but it doesn't. It hits somewhere else. Yeah, but the fact of the matter is... 70, listen to me. 70% of all munitions fired in a war do not hit the target they were meant for. Rationally, no, I, I understand that. Then. So there's going to be okay. apartment houses hit and schools hit and hospitals hit and civilians killed. That's the nature of war. This is a war. Well, but if they were dropping the bomb in the first place, it, it, it would truly be accidental. Yeah, but they are. <laughs> so, okay, with that, I'll let someone else on. They are. And when they drop a bomb intentionally... Whether it hits the target or not, there's nothing accidental about it. It's not an accident. It's an intentional act of war. Uh, you know, they're starting to brainwash people into think that when they launch a bomb, it's supposed to hit exactly what it was launched at, and that's a lie. Remember the Gulf War? They showed us uh, bombs going in windows and down chimneys and all that kind of stuff, and they had everybody believing that they, could, they were only hitting the targets that they aimed for. 
guess what, folks? You can get the reports, the analysis of the effectiveness of the weapons and, and the weapons fired versus targets hit, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, after the Gulf War. And it was the exact same figures as the Vietnam War. Seventy percent of all munitions fired hit targets other than the one they were fired at. It's the truth. It's always going to be the truth, no matter how technical their systems get. There are people operating those systems. And there are other factors that enter into it. And there's equipment failures. There's all kinds of things. There's mistakes in the targeting. And, and you know, it, that's just the way the ball bounces. 520-333-4578. Is the number. Now, in case you're out there shaking your head, I am not in favor of this. I cannot support an unlawful, unprovoked attack by the United States upon a sovereign nation that has always been our ally. In a fight that's a civil war that's absolutely none of our business, that was provoked by a Marxist, terrorist, drug-dealing criminal force called the KLA, which we are now supporting. Good evening. You're on the air. Yes, uh, good evening, Mr. Cooper. How are you? Good. Yes, uh, Turn uh, your radio uh, off. Little... Turn your radio off. Yeah, I saw. Okay. I was digging around a little bit, and I found this book written by a British general about uh, 15 years ago. The title of the book is World <laughs> War Three. <laughs> and, uh, it, it, uh, I already know what it's going to say, but go ahead. Uh, are you playing with the book? Yes, I am. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, among other things, the, the uh, London is hit by a, a nuclear bomb, and uh, he gives maps and a lot of other detailed information on the whole situation. And it seems that the object of all this is, is to uh, destroy the, the, the ability of the uh, Serbia or Yugoslavia to, to to wage any kind of war and decimate their military. That seems to be the total objective. But well, that's not the total objective. That's one of the objectives uh, toward the real objective, yeah. which is to destabilize the area and put it under international control, establishing the legitimacy of the New World Order and its police force yeah. to be able to exert its will over sovereign nations against any law. Yeah, well, Whenever they want to do it. Yeah, Bertrand Russell was one of the architects of the New World Order. Well, you're familiar, familiar with that. You better believe it. <laughs> That's interesting. Well, you're on the right track, uh, Mr. Cooper. And well, I hope so. I've only been studying this for about almost 30 years now. <laughs> it's a difficult thing to understand. Uh, I, I read a, a thing that was published by the uh, trial, that Trilateral Commission there. It was back in 75. And uh, it was an article in there by Robert McNamara. And he was saying at that time that seventy five percent of the resources um, were controlled by a small handful of corporations, multinational. And you know, amongst those were several very large uh, corporations that are mainly British. Uh, I mean I use the word British, I mean it's it's, it's a multinational thing. It's like there's certain American corporations that are interlocked with these uh, you know, the Oscars like Rio Tino Zinc and you know, others and and and, uh, uh, yeah, they're not really British. They're multinational. Yeah. Their stock is owned by people in many different countries, yeah. and uh, different nationalities serve on the board of directors. Yeah, right. It just uh, it just blew my mind when everybody was going around. Oh, Japan is buying up the United States. <laughs> yeah. Well, the only reason that they thought Japan was buying up the United States is because when they see a Japanese person, they can recognize them as being different because yeah. of their Oriental features. Yeah. That's racist. Yeah. The truth is that Japan never came close to the highest owner of American property in this country, which is a Dutch corporation, and second to the Dutch corporation is the Rank Corporation, which is owned by the, the House of Windsor. Well, I've said this for for years. 
in the in the new world order, when all of this is finished, there'll be one aircraft company, there'll be one airlines, there'll be one shoe company, there'll be one uh, fast food company, and there'll be one hotel chain, and uh, that's the way it's going to be. It's only frightening if people don't know how to prepare and save their own seeds. Yeah, well, the and, if, and if they don't know that yeah. there are places to get the original seeds, which are not hybrids, oh. and you can do it, and you can get them in bulk, you and you can plant them. them, and you can harvest the seeds, and you can actually increase your your supply, yeah. and, um, and, and you know, you can do that. Yeah, well, I'm beginning to wise up a little bit. I have made a discovery on uh, a method of... Uh, Ocean currents for, uh, for providing huge amounts of power, which, which would be great for desalinizing seawater. Sure. And then the more I got into it, I mean, there was a study done, millions of dollars just spent in the Office of Naval Research, had a contract with this group, and they demonstrated the feasibility of it, but they couldn't do anything with it. <laughs> the guy was paying the bills, had $5 billion in capital. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a damn thing he could do about it. And yeah. He was so frustrated, he you know, finally killed him. But uh, and that was right at the height of the oil crisis. Mm -hmm. So I, from that point on, I began to suspect there was something funny going on. Well, there's definitely something funny going on. A lot of things funny going on. Well, that one biggie, I mean, you know, uh, Paul wrote out any, any, any fuel costs or pollution. I mean, and I got two different discoveries I made. And then this one was, was so damned obvious. And you know what's weird? You talk to these, uh, these uh, environmental people, and they go ballistic. Well, you can't do that. It'll kill the fish. <laughs> oh, I'm not kidding. <laughs> I know you're not kidding. Uh, it won't, won't kill the fish unless you're poisoning them or you're catching them or you're clubbing them to death. Or something. Yeah, but I mean, something yeah. like this, you could have fresh water for huge yeah. areas that... Uh, well, there's no fresh water. Yeah. Well, listen, we're coming up toward the top of the hour. i got to let some other people get in here. Thanks for calling. Well, you keep on the right, you're on the right track. Well, it's very, it must be very frustrating for you. I hope so. I've given up. <laughs> okay, uh, sir. Good night. I've given up everything to be on this track. If I'm not on the right track, then uh, I'm doomed. That's all I can say. 520-333-4578 is the number. 520-333-4578. Seven eight. Yeah, I've come under a lot of fire by a lot of people who say, you should be backing our troops. No matter if it's not their fault. The government sent them in there, and we got to back them, and we got to win now, or we don't have any credibility. Screw credibility. Screw winning. It's wrong. That's what Hitler asked the German people to do. I will not back a wrong action. I will not back troops that go in to kill people in a wrong action. I did not back or support the invasion of Panama. I will not back or support this invasion of the sovereign nation of Yugoslavia. I will not do it. It's against the law. It's against the Constitution. It's against international law. It's against the United Nations Charter. It's against the NATO Treaty. I will not back it. I feel sorry for the enlisted men. My heart goes out to them. They're trusting their government and their officers to tell them the truth. They're trusting their government and their officers to send them on a rightful, lawful mission. And they're being lied to. I support them in spirit. I do not support the officer corps. I do not support the United States government. As far as I'm concerned, William Jefferson Clinton is the new Hitler of the Fourth Reich. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Bill. Please take my call. I have a question. Uh, I heard a guy mention on a, uh, another show earlier uh, today or yesterday about how Bill Clinton uh, is not the commander in chief unless he's elected or uh, by Congress, I guess, or something like that. Does that have something to do with the, the War Act? Well, he's, he's not the commander in chief unless the United States is engaged in war and only Congress can declare war. That's what I thought. So, I mean, read the Constitution. That makes sense to me. It's all there. It's all in the Constitution. It's all in the law. Why Americans won't read those seven little articles? Uh, it only takes a you know very short time. The Constitution is not thick. It's not long. It's very clear. 
Its meaning is clear. It's concise and to the point. And the men who wrote it were geniuses, and they, they used the language that they meant to use, and they meant to say exactly what they wrote. And uh, why Americans are so afraid to read the Constitution is beyond me. Well spoken. Thank you. Good night. You're welcome. 520-333-4578. Good evening. You're on the air. Uh, good evening. How are you doing? Fine. Yeah, well, I've been listening to your program now, and uh, I'm surprised to hear something like this over the radio. You know, I'm Serbian, and I've been listening to this media and everything else, and this is kind of new. Well, it's not new. It's just honest. And well, <laughs> I'm very appreciative that there is still somebody who say the things the way they are. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And I would like to say, you know, it's really hard for me to talk about these things now, but... I imagine that it is. You know, this is... If the Serbs are so bad, how come they are expelled from Croatia? How come they are expelled from Bosnia? You know? That's exactly right. And what did people think was going to happen to the Serbs who lived in Kosovo if Kosovo became an independent nation? There would have been ethnic cleansing of the Serbs. We all know that. But these liars on CNN, the Communist News Network in Washington, D.C., won't tell anybody that. But that's exactly what was going to happen, isn't it? Yep. Well, I'm glad that you put the things, you know, the way they really are. Before the World War II, that was like seven, eight hundred thousand Serbian people in Kosovo. In 1997, there is like 180,000 of them. So you tell me who's kicking who out. Yeah. You're right. Uh, you have a good evening. Thank you very much for your call, and and I support you in in your in your uh, your hour of need a hundred percent. Thanks. And that's it, folks. That's the end of uh, tonight's broadcast. For those of you listening in Arizona, if you're wondering what's going on, uh, you probably were taken by surprise, just like I was. Uh, we don't go on daylight savings time here, so I had no idea that we were supposed to uh, move the broadcast up an hour because we have to be on according to East Coast time, which does go on daylight savings time, and we have to go in the air at 8 Eastern for international broadcast. And so Alan, <laughs> Alan Weiner from WBCQ called me uh, at about the 10 minutes after... <laughs> five and said what's the matter why aren't you on the air and he was just in a dead panic and uh said what do you mean i'm not supposed to be on the air until six o'clock it's only five and so f uh, for all through the summer until they change again and if nobody tells me i won't know it because you know we don't advertise that here in arizona because we don't do it we got plenty of sunshine we don't need any more and uh, so anyway um that's what happened and from now on the hour of the time will be aired from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, which is what Arizona is always on. So that's why, if you tuned in in Arizona and you're wondering why the broadcast is ending an hour early, it's not. We've already been on the air for two hours. Good night, folks. God bless each and every single one of you. Try to listen to the words of this, if you can, and uh, decipher it and... Uh, you know, you need to hear it.
That's a surprise, folks. I didn't plan that. <laughs> but don't go. Don't go. Please stay. Would you walk out the door like you did once before? Would this time be different? Would you stay? Go, go. Please stay. If I call out your name like a friend, would you leave me alone with my kids, knowing I, I need your soul? Would you still let go? Would this time be in some way? Don't go. Please stay. You took me away from the rest of the world when you 